Who's cast in Detroit? And I'm talking about you had the big ones. You had two, four, and seven. Fifty might even have been in news back then. But for my money, Karen, the best news in town was Daryl Wood and Susan Fowler, who, to, who I think I'm still in love with to this day. Well, you're a man of a lot of passion. <laughs> <laughs> and they were very good. They were both very good. And our news not only covered things going on here in Detroit, but from an African-American perspective. And we always did global news. We always did national yes. and international news. And we would talk about things going on, particularly uh, in African nations who were going through a period of decolonization and, and independence. Yes. Yes. We would always cover activities and things that were going on as people were working toward that. But I agree. Susan Fowler and Darren Wood were, were, were amazing. A lot of people, uh, people, oh, I keep hitting my mic there. Mm -hmm. um, Amir Makeupson, who yes. some, some people know, yes. Amir got her start, you know, mm -hmm. uh, at the station. And as a matter of fact, you can see one of, at the station, you'll be able to see uh, the first Big City News broadcast. About Big City News. Big That's City. what it's called. And yes. you can see that first broadcast, and there is uh, Amir Makeupson and Pal the Q and Doug Morrison, <laughs> Jerry Blocker. Jerry Blocker, that's he, right. He came over from Channel 4 at the time. And so, you know, we, we, we try to make sure that there are a lot of stories that as many as we can tell yes. that explain the history and the important significance and the impact. Okay. Keep Every Friday beginning at 10 a.m., right? 10 a.m., so that's coming up like day after tomorrow, folks. 10 a.m., 3.30 p.m., and then there's the American Black Journal Road Show yes. on Monday. And, uh, you know, I think tickets may all be gone, but not just about, but if you go to Debbie, the Detroit Public Television right. event, right, you can sign up for that. Right. And that's going to be exciting, too. Let me shift gears here. First of all, let me reintroduce our very, very special guest, Karen Hudson samuels she is, uh, for this next segment, a member of the Black Historic Sites Committee um, of the Detroit Historical Society. That's correct. That's and they're correct. housed in the Detroit Historical Museum. Uh, tell us about the Black Historic Sites Committee and the role that you play in preserving history in this town. Well, I'm a member. At one point, I was uh, a vice chair of the Black Historic Sites Committee. Mm -hmm. And it really, um, and that was over a period of four or five years. And it really was an impetus for getting the historical mar Michigan historical marker for the station. Yes. And what the committee is devoted to, it was formed by Ernest Brown, a councilman here in Detroit back in the early 1970s. Ran for mayor. The ran for mayor. And his daughter is currently a member of the Black Historic Sites Committee, and it's devoted to um, preserving the history of people and events and places that contributed to the development of the city uh, and also looking at bringing historical markers to those people places and events that took place that are important for a part of the history there's a lot of different ways to tell history mm -hmm. you know through textbooks through speeches and so forth one is through historical markers because of the places it's a stake in the ground. Something significant yeah. happened here, and it's important to pay attention to. So they also conduct programs and activities throughout the year. Uh, they had MLK Day activities as African American History Day, and also a jazz series mm -hmm. that we do now. And uh, that's something that you go to the Detroit Historical Society website. With the next yeah. um, Dennis Coffey is the next guitar art, player. Guitar is the next artist. It's going to be, um, and these are in the streets of Old Detroit. Uh -huh. So it's jazz in the streets of Old Detroit at the Detroit Historical Museum. And so uh, that's uh, very exciting, and people should right. check it out, you know. How, you, how can people help the Black Historic Sites Committee or even become a member if, in fact, the memberships are open? Well, they are open. <clears throat> um, one of, there are a couple of ways. They, they can come to meetings that we have. Uh, on Wednesdays, I do believe it is the third Wednesday of the month. In the, it's at the museum in the evening at, at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, they could stop by during the day, and people at the front desk could help them answer any questions they mm -hmm. might have. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's had a long history, and it's very important to the ongoing uh, appreciation of history, whether it's in... You know, we'd like to do things in the classroom 
uh, you know, through our programs and events. And so if anybody's interested in Detroit right. history, they that's definitely want to become a part of that. And you're a big fan yes. of, of, of uh, Karen Hudson Sanders. Oh, we have to get on. <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> oh, you were going to say something else. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't pay the man. I don't know. He's a thrall beyond belief. I have been a fan. He's been a fan. Since the classic movie show. Yeah, since the <laughs> I've been telling you that for years You've now. You've been telling me that for years. And I was only 12 years old at the time. No. That's a child prodigy. Child pro so yes. um, where were you? lost my train of thought there. But we're uh, bringing back tours. So the Black Historic Site Committee will be conducting tours of Black Historic Site where yes. there are historical markers. And the first one's going to be coming up. And there'll be a lot more marketing and information about that in the coming days and weeks. The first one is going to be uh, coming up in June, and it's a bus tour. Go around to all the historic sites, uh, learn a little about uh, the history behind those markers and why they're important and significant. I'm glad to say that the WGPR Museum will be one of those spots yeah. along well, the way. It has to be. It really has to be. And, and, and uh, then it's a four-hour tour, um, and if you go to the Detroit Historical Museum, Detroit Historical Society website in the next week or two, you'll be able to sign up mm -hmm. for those tours and get your tickets in early, because we're expecting people that are going to be really interested in, in, in participating. Right. And then doing this four-hour tour, you also get to stop at Burke's Place and have lunch. Yes. And the Burke's Place in and of itself there in Eastern Market is quite exciting. So uh, I, I'm kind of on two, two trains running between right. the Black Historic Sites Committee and the WGPR piece. Yes. They're all about history. They're all about the contributions. A couple more quick questions. We've just about run out of time. First of all, other than WGPR, do you have a favorite Black Historic Site or two in Detroit that you think people should know about? Well, you know, that's interesting. Um, there are sites with historical markers, and I learned from you today about one devoted to soldiers, African-American soldiers who fought in the Civil War. Yes. That's a part of history a lot of people may not realize that African-Americans were soldiers and fought in the Civil War. In that first regiment, there is a historical marker yes. devoted to that piece of history. So I don't have a favorite, but I have ones that really make you pause mm -hmm. and, and reflect. And that's one I'd have to mention. Good. The, the only one I would mention, uh, and you and I talked earlier today, I meant to mention it then, is the Orsel McGee House over on Seaball Street. They were, uh, that was that, that was the decision that got rid of restrictive covenants okay. on homes in this, in this country. Uh, and I think that's very significant. When you, if you go over there now, you can't find a white person. Right. But at that time, if you were black, you could not live there. And I think it's significant that we remember, it wasn't that long ago in the 40s, right. that black folks could not even live in that neighborhood. I, I'm so glad that they have a marker. That we have run out of time, Karen. Anything else you want to tell us about the WGPR Museum or the Black Historic Sites Committee or American uh, Black Journal or anything else you want to promote here today? Stay tuned. <laughs> Cliff Russell, thank you very much for providing time on your program to talk about these things, to talk about the WGPR Museum open on Fridays from 10 to 3.30, about the Black Historic Sites Committee of the Detroit Historical Society, which has membership meetings on the third uh, Wednesday of each mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. So these are all things that are open to the public to participate in. Wonderful. Be a contributor. And, you know, it's exciting. Bring your kids if they need a book report or something that they need to learn or do. Yeah. Boy, you can pass through any of these events and really get a great snapshot of our contributions. Thank Fantastic. you so much for the time. Thank I really appreciate Thank you for it. the time. And please agree to come back on this show Anytime. again very soon. Thank you so much. All right. Karen Hudson Samuels, our very special guest here. As we broadcast live from the 2018 North American International Auto Show, I'm Cliff Russell. This is the Cliff Russell Show. We got another half hour to get through. And uh, you can be a part of that if you'd like. 313-778-7600. In the meantime, we're going to pay a couple of bills. We'll be right back. This is 910 AM Superstation, the future of radio. <laughs> This is Attorney Carl.